Welcome back to my uh, battle reports and it's been a bit of a time since the last one uh, Christmas put a bit of a hold on it but we've managed to get a game in since Christmas so here's uh, battle report 5 Dwarf v Tomb Kings I'm playing my normal partner and that's Colin and uh, we're playing a practice game for an upcoming tournament uh, it's using Swedish comp and it's 2400 points the, uh, the comp is uh, set from 8 so not too hard armies, being the hardest armies are always scored at zero. It's a one day three game tournament and they are using mysterious uh, terrain. Uh, it's got secret missions and each one of those gives an additional 150 victory points. The uh, system is uh, 20 nil uh, and your comp, whatever it is, so if it's a comp 15, at the end of the tournament you'll get 15 tournament points added to your score. I've been thinking about taking a dwarf ambush list for this tournament and it was my opportunity to give them a run out. Colin, uh, he's persevering with his Tomb Kings and has uh, set up an interesting build and that's what we were going to go. Put in the dwarves against the Tomb Kings to see how it runs. For my dwarves I'm taking Bugman as my general. I've then got a BS Bean Thane with the banner of Grungi which gives 5 plus ward against shooting and magic. I've then got two runesmiths, uh, both have got uh, two times a uh, rune eating spell, one has the addition of a rune of passage to make it different. Uh, I've then got 42 long beards with uh, shield and hand weapons, I've got 33 bugman rangers, crossbow great weapon, I've got 30 miners with the prospector with a steam drill to re-roll uh, to come on, and then I've got two gyrocopters, one with vanguard. I have a fairly simple strategy for the dwarfs, which is to vanguard up the longbeards as uh, fast as I can to get to the uh, the main unit of the opponent. Use the uh, rangers to uh, scout and get in on the flank, and then the miners to come on behind the main unit to pincer them between the longbeards and then decimate them. That's a theory, fairly simple, we'll see how it runs. I didn't get all the uh, items and the setups of Colin's list, but this is what he's got as follows. He's got a High Like Priest, uh, level 4 on Nakara Magic, uh, with a 4-up ward save. He's then got a Tomb King in a chariot. He's got a unit of 7 chariots, a unit of uh, around about 25 archers for the bunker of the uh, Like Priest, uh, 3 Necro Knights uh, hidden below the sand, 2 times 3 Carrion, units and then one times four carrying units, a war sphinx with fiery breath, a colossus and two caskets. I think Colin's strategy is to use the two caskets to give a bit of fear on the opponent to allow his small buff and hex magic to go through to help his units. He's uh, got chaff to uh, prevent people from getting to him to hold people up and then the caskets perhaps to do the damage to uh, weaken people down and then some hard hitting units, the chariots, the war sphinx and the colossus to do the damage once he's uh, got an opportunity to do that. So under the Swedish comp scoring my dwarves are running at a 15 and Colin's tomb king running at an 18. Disappointingly I rolled a 2 for the uh, ancestral grudge which meant that uh, only my general hated his general. So it could have been better, but well, there we go, that's what happens. For spells, Colin got Desiccation, which gives a minus one strength and toughness, or a minus d3. He got uh, Incantation of Vengeance, which was uh, a minus d3 to its movement, causing dangerous terrain tests. He got Desert Wind, he could move his unit, uh, making another normal move. And then he got Protection, giving everything, or possibly giving everything, a five plus ward save. So quite good for him in the game. Colin had got some new terrain, so there were some uh, marsh areas and there were some uh, standing rocks. So the marshes were going to be quicksand, Khmerian quicksand, and the rocks were going to be impassable. And we had a pyramid in one corner and a few little uh, woods. Don't know how they fitted into the scheme of things, but that's where they were. I got to put down my troops first and uh, the three drops didn't take very long. I decided to put the long beards opposite the... Uh, quicksand, because I had the Rune of Passage and can get through without taking any dangerous terrain tests. Uh, I was hoping that I would be able to move up the rangers on the right flank uh, with their scout 
to uh, to cover the Longbeards, who would be moving up with a bit of luck using Vanguard. Colin was a bit worried about his uh, casket, so on his left flank he put the War Sphinx and the Colossus with the unit of uh, Carrion. On the right flank he had it protected more or less by the impassable uh, Sphinx and Pyramids. I think he thought his light high priest was uh, safe in the unit of uh, archers in front of the dangerous terrain and I like, wouldn't be able to uh, charge him or wouldn't want to charge him because of the chariot threat and also the dangerous terrain. We both had scouts and Colin won the roll off to go first. He had a good idea where my rangers were going to go so he put his uh, light horse archers down to stop them scouting closer than 12 inches which effectively stopped the vanguard with my long beards. So that was my strategy, out of the window, before the game had even started. A risky strategy ambush. On to vanguards, and the only thing I could do was to move my gyrocopter, which had the uh, vanguard rule, up towards the horse archers. Dwarf turn one, and I moved the gyrocopters over to my right flank. Getting one in range of a steam gun on the horse archers, and the other one uh, coming in front and backing it up. Longbeards moved up their six inches uh, in a march move and the rangers stood still so they could shoot the horse archers. The horse archers were soon uh, dispatched by the gyrocopter and the rangers. Well, that got rid of those, but I'm sure the carrion will be there next turn. Tomb King turn one and there's very little movement. The carrion on my right move up to a point just outside of the charge range of the rangers. And on the left the Colossus and the War Sphinx move slightly forward. We move on to Magic and Colin gets 10 dice to my 4. He goes for a Desert Wind to be able to move up the Colossus and the War Kitty so I stop that with my Rune of Spell Eating. Unfortunately it doesn't eat it. Uh, he then goes on to try Desiccation on my Gyrocopter which would have given it minus 1 Strength and minus 1 Toughness but I roll the dice and are able to uh, stop the spell going off. He then uh, targets the gyrocopter with the casket and is able to kill the gyro. It then bounces onto the longbeards. Fortunately, I only lose one of those and it then bounces onto the second gyrocopter, but I managed to roll underneath its leadership. Shooting from the chariots and the light like, high priest bunker, did nothing to the longbeards and then we move on to turn two for the dwarves. I roll for the miners and get a two but because they've got the steam drill I can re-roll and I get uh, a five and they come on. I move the remaining gyrocopter up into steam gun range on the carrion and then advance the rangers up their full six inch march move towards the carrion also. I have forgotten to mention that Bugman uh, rolled stubborn for the turn one and he rolled stubborn for turn two again. I had armed the miners with blasting charges and here I really dithered whether to use them in the shooting phase or to keep them back just in case of the chariots. Um, with a bit of uh, mind games I think from Colin, uh, nicely, uh, I decided not to use them and I think that was a mistake. In the shooting phase I think the copter did one wound to the carrion. Tomb King turn two, there's no charges, and Colin rolls to see where the Necro Knights uh, come up. They uh, come up and they don't scatter, so there they are behind the Longbeards, uh, causing a little bit of a threat. And then reforms the chariots to face the miners and the like priest bunker. Colin reforms the uh, bunker to face the miners and moves the high like priest out to try and keep him safe. For his other movement, he moves the Necro Knights up slightly but he uses a carrion to chaff up the rangers but angling them off so that I don't get a good overrun to get me nearer to the main fighting. Colin rolls two sixes for magic and then tries to get desiccation to minus the strength on the minus. I'm able to uh, stop that. He then goes for vengeance to give them dangerous train when moving. I'm able to stop that. What I can't stop though is the five plus ward that goes onto them. That's going to cause me a lot of trouble. Fortunately, shooting does, doesn't do too many wounds to the miners, and I lose a couple of them. Dwarf turn three, and I declare three charges. Longbeards into the carrion in the quicksand. They move forward, and that's when Colin finds out I've got the rune of passage. I then take the rangers into the carrion on the right flank, 
and then I take the miners into the High Like Priest bunker. I was able to angle the miners in such a way that I could catch the uh, Like High Priest if I'm able to wipe out the skeletons and overrun. However, he had taken his Potion of Toughness at the beginning of my turn, giving him plus three for this turn and his next turn. I moved the gyrocopter up to the side of the chariots in order to give them a steam gunning. Unfortunately, I either did no wounds or I forgot to use it. On to hand to hand and the rangers take out the carrion. In the middle, the longbeards take out their carrion and reform to face forward. And then with the miners, it goes horribly wrong. Although the miners do a huge amount of wounds, the 5 plus ward on the uh, like priest bunker can enable to save quite a few and what's left is two skeleton archers. I reform to face the oncoming chariots. The decision not to use the blasting charges on the uh, high like priest uh, bunker really was my downfall there. Uh, I should really have also used the gyrocopter to angle off the chariots but uh, looking back at it that's what I realised I should have done. So, Tomb King turn 3, and yep, the chariots with the Tomb King charge into the miners. This is not going to go well. The Like High Priest starts heading off for the safety of the hills, while the War Sphinx and the Colossus start to move around to threaten the Longbeards. Magic is 7-3, to three and I managed to stop the desiccation on the miners, but I can't stop the 5 plus ward on the chariots. 18 miners die before I get a chance to strike back and I think I should in hindsight really have put a couple of uh, attacks onto the skeletons in the flank but I didn't. Combat results left me needing double ones but of course I don't get that and I flee off with the two archers chasing me. The chariots stand to reform to face the longbeards in the centre. Dwarf turn four and I've got a long charge into the chariots but I decide not to take it as it would expose my flank to both the War Sphinx and the Colossus. Looking for points I uh, take the gyrocopter off towards the like high priest. Hopefully I might be able to take some wounds off him although he has got a 4 plus ward. The rangers I turn uh, were turned to face the necropolis knights and I managed to take uh, one of them off the, uh, the board. Tomb King turn 4 and yep the like high priest heads for the hills and hides behind the little pyramid. The necro knights are heading into the wood to try and get some cover to try and save them from uh, losing the points to me. The war sphinx and the colossus are heading back towards Colin's deployment zone. Tomb King magic and yep the casket goes again and he gets rid of my last remaining gyrocopter. The shooting however into the longbeards does nothing. Turn five and six really, uh, very little happened. I'm still trying to take the last wounds off of the uh, Necropolis Knights. He enters a wood, it's a fungus forest. He becomes stupid. Uh, in his uh, turn he fails his uh, leadership and stumbles forward. Uh, I still managed to take a couple of shots off him. Uh, he moves his units out into the deployment zone to gain the uh, secret mission. For his last magic phase he managed to get off a cheeky little desiccation onto the rangers meaning that I needed fives followed by sixes to uh, do any damage to the necropolis knights which I failed to and the game ends with them safe. Well an interesting list to use the uh, dwarf ambush. It could have worked even uh, with the deployment of the scouts by Colin to stop my vanguards. I still had the opportunity to take the um, bunker and then overrun into Like High Priest. It was just my inability to make the decision to use the blasting charges on them prior to the charge. Uh, I should really have done that. That would have taken them, I think. Some good work by Colin on the redirecting and the chaffs that he used really kept uh, Bugman and his rangers out of the game. So fair play to Colin, that uh, really did hamper me. Will I take this to the competition? Oh, I don't think so. It does seem very risky. Uh, not uh, quite as good as the Stroller's Vanguard with the three big units. I still want to take the Dwarves, but I think I'll uh, go for a safer mixed arms uh, army. Final result, Colin wins by 
347 points. That's including the uh, secret mission, 150 points each for uh, us both. And he wins 11-9. So, not too bad. Thanks for watching. Please like if you did. Uh, and please feel free to share this to uh, friends and that. I hope to get another battle report up soon. So, in the meantime, uh, thanks very much. And look forward to uh, another one.